Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to this week's weekly roundup where we bring you up to date with what's been happening in the WoW PvP scene. To kick things off, let's have a quick look at what's going on within the first week of rated PvP that just finished. Players' feedback has been quite positive as almost every top player enjoys the pace of the game even though some specs might be a little bit broken. When we take a look at the latter, we can see that some classes are more popular than others with the top melees being Arms Warrior, Sub Rogue, and Windwalker Monk. All of these three specs are doing exceptionally well. When we take a look at our top casters, the Shadow Priest rework is extremely enjoyed by the community as they are taking the number one played spot on the ladder. Balanced Druids and Elemental Shamans are one of the top performers as well as they bring a lot of utility and damage to the table. When we are looking at healers, we can clearly see that Mistweavers and Resto Druids are lacking behind the top healers which are Resto Shamans, Discipline Priests, and Holy Paladins. Overall though, a lot of classes are viable, which is a great thing. We would like to see some buffs to weaker classes and some small nerfs to the top performers to keep the game balanced, but they should keep it minor so it won't change the much enjoyed pace of the game. We'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are for the first week of the season. Have you been enjoying this super fast paced meta or do you think things should be toned down a bit? Let us know in the comments below. Next up, in addition to a ladder check, we've got some spicy new PvP hotfixes. There have been a handful of changes to classes and also a change to the Curian Covenant ability, which will slow down the game quite a bit, but let's get going. First up, Subtlety Rogue have seen a heavy hit to their ability to one-shot players. Their Curian Covenant ability, Echoing Reprimand, has seen a heavy 50% nerf. And on top of that, their Conduit, Reverberation, which enhances Echoing Reprimand, has also been nerfed by 20%, making their one-shot goes a lot less deadly. As this wasn't harsh enough, Blizzard also decided to tune down some actual rogue abilities, leaving many rogue players frustrated. In addition, their Night Stalker talent has been hit with a 4% nerf, and also Shadow Blades, their most offensive ability, has been nerfed by 10%. In our opinion, this won't make Subtlety Rogue bad, as many rogue players are fearing, and many top rogue players like Waz already said that Subtlety will be one of the top performing specs still. They still bring a lot of damage, and more importantly, their CC. The changes definitely won't make them able to one-shot healers anymore fully on their own in a kidney shot, as the Curian Covenant ability only seems to do a fraction of its previous damage. We will have to wait and see if rogues will change their covenants or even if assassination will be once again a better choice for many rogues to make. Either way, as a rogue player, you definitely want to keep an eye on all these changes. Next in line, we have nerfs to Unholy DKs, Boomkins, and MM Hunters. Unholy DK has seen a nerf to their mastery, reducing its effectiveness by 20% due to them being super overpowered in PvE. This will make quite a difference as Unholy DKs were trying to stack a lot of mastery. So with this nerf, if you play Unholy, you will once again prefer versatility and haste over mastery now. Balanced Druid's legendary Balance of All Things has been nerfed by 10%, making it much less broken. It definitely won't hurt their overall performance that much as they still bring tons of damage and tankiness to the table. MM Hunter's aimed and arcane shot has been reduced by 5%, which is not much but will definitely hurt them and could force Hunter players once again into playing survival. Last up, there's a class-wide nerf for combat meditation which you can gain by playing the Kyrian Covenant and choosing Pelagos as your Soulbind. Its mastery has been decreased by 50% in PvP, which is huge, as this trait was completely over the top, giving players insane damage spikes. Overall, rogues are the biggest loser of this round of class hotfixes, but Blizzard has already stated that they will take a look at things that might kill people way too fast. So, warriors and windwalkers, I wouldn't make myself too comfortable right now. All of these changes will definitely slow down the pace of the game, but regardless, these are generally good changes as rogues were completely broken and they had to be nerfed. We aren't done with the hotfixes just yet though. There has been a change to 2v2 rated arenas. Dampening will no longer start at 20%, but it will start straight away. In 3v3, dampening will kick in after 5 minutes. This will definitely make 2v2 games last a lot longer and is not appreciated by the community at whole. The change was made because double DPS comps were dominating the 2v2 ladder, but this change will definitely add a lot of strength to healer DPS comps. Next up, Blizzard has finally announced their plans for the next Arena World Championship. It will start in January with its first match on the 4th already, that's sooner than we've all expected. 
The format of the next Shadowlands Arena Championship will be quite similar to the one that we know from BFA. Season 1 will consist of 4 cups for each region where the top 8 teams can qualify themselves for the circuit, which is a round robin tournament where then the best 4 teams will proceed to either the EU Finals or NA Finals. After the champions of Season 1 have been crowned, right after there will be a Season 2, but without the qualifier cups meaning that the last top six teams from Season 1 will advance to the Season Circuit for each region once again. But there will also be a place for two newcomer teams that can prove themselves in a one-time cup before the Season 2 circuits begin. This is really interesting, as it gives room to smaller teams having a chance to draw the spotlight on them as the competition in the smaller Qualifier Cup will be quite low as the top teams already have their spot in the circuit. After the circuit has been played out, the top four teams will then proceed to the big grand finals for their region. So we once again won't have a showdown between EU and NA as it will be separated due to COVID-19. So overall, this is looking like a pretty exciting year that we're going to have. So gather your teammates to train and play with them in upcoming tournaments. Anyone can participate and it's a lot of fun. Next up, we have some informative news on item acquisition. Players in a 20-man raid group were getting an average of 5 items per boss, when an average of 3 items was intended by Blizzard. So, the drop chance of items has been significantly reduced. This is great news for every PvPer, as this will make PvE item rewards from raiding bosses and End of Mythic Plus runs way less interesting to go after, as, after all, the best and biggest upgrade will come from your weekly vault. Speaking of the weekly vault, players have spotted that the vault can actually drop elite weapons with an item level of 233. This once again is awesome, as previously thought that weapons with that item level could only drop from the last boss of the raid, Sire Denathrius. To receive the elite sword from the vault, or if you want to upgrade a conquest weapon to the elite item level of 233, you must have achieved a rating of 2400 this season. Finally, we have a nice handy macro for you. This will allow you to see your vault progress from anywhere so that you don't have to visit it in Ouroboros each time. You can find the macro in the description. Anyway, that's all for this week's PvP Roundup. Stay tuned for next week, but for now, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and let us know how you are enjoying Shadowlands Arena so far. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.